Hey everybody, Matt Barton with this week's Broker Minute or Two. Hey, um, I hope your Columbus Day is going well. Um, last week, I talked briefly about terms of contracts and how we need to not only pay attention to them, but be consistent in our use of them. And I would also say not just the terms, but their definitions. And I briefly glossed over um, days. And uh, one of my agents in uh, PG, one of our agents in PG raised this question and went and found a little more detail on it. So I thought we would share it with you. Okay, so in the REPSI, right, section 21 is the paragraph that is titled time is of the essence. And really fancy way of saying is there are dates in this contract, pay attention to them, right? And tangent to those dates are timelines and date uh, counting of days. So the first point Craig um, Wagner, who was our UAR attorney, uh, makes, and this is all the way back in 2019 and no, nothing has changed. Uh, all deadlines under the REPSI are by five o'clock PM mountain time. And believe it or not, we run into this a little more regular than I would like to admit, uh, when somebody signs and our agent doesn't pay attention to when they signed, for instance, if they signed Eastern time versus Pacific time, and the contract is very specific, it's governed by mountain time. So be aware of that. Make sure you're double checking, especially with DocuSign, DigiSign, uh, DotLoop, any of the electronic signature platforms, make sure you know when they were signed because it does matter. All right, second one, anytime the REPC refers to days, it means calendar days. And let's take that a step further. Calendar days also include holidays because I get that question. Well, it's a calendar day, but it's a holiday. So does it count? The answer is yes. There's no exclusion. You just literally count each day. Now, the key point that tends to be uh, misunderstood, and, and in the case of the agent I was dealing with in Pleasant Grove, the other side was emphatic that they were right. And then when we went through and read this together, she's like, oh my gosh, she doesn't know what she's talking about. I'm like, eh, that happens sometimes. And uh, just a quick note of caution, don't make them feel bad. They're good actors. They're trying to get it right. They just, they were told something at one time, they got it fixed in their head uh, incorrectly, and you can be the one to politely enlighten them and make them a better practitioner. All right, so last section. Lastly, days are to be counted after the event that triggers the timing requirement. The easiest example of this would be earnest money. Think of other ones, right? Um, the one we were dealing with was the time clause. That's one we get a lot of, right? How does the clock work there? Okay, so using this simple example, under the REPSI, in regards to earnest money, under the REPSI, the buyer has four days, calendar days, to deliver earnest money to the real estate brokerage. So if the buyer's offer is accepted on December 3rd, that's the day that the event was triggered. That means the buyer has the 4th, the 5th, the 6th, and the 7th, right? Where agents get it confused is they think that you start counting, the clock starts on the 4th. It, that's not what it says here. It says the first day that is counted is the day following the event that triggers it. So the example I used was we don't teach our kids to count 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. We say you count. Right? If you're if you're counting M&Ms, you don't count zero and then one, two, three, four. Well, it's the same thing with days here. If the event triggered it on the third, then the very next day is the first day and the second and the third and the fourth. OK, and this is important to remember, coupled with the fact that not it doesn't give you the full day. Right. Unless it's explicitly written that it goes to till midnight the default for that day is at five o'clock PM Mountain Standard Time. So hopefully that makes you guys the wise ones in the room. You actually know how to count days in a contract. Um, in this case, uh, the situation we were dealing with, the other agent was telling our agent, oh no, you have until tomorrow at, at five o'clock. And when we actually applied this, as Craig w Wagner described it here, the deadline's today at five o'clock. And um, you know, the, there's nothing worse than having something hit the fan after the fact and realize, oh, I was relying on an agent because they're a friend or they're a good practitioner, but they had their data wrong. And now I have to explain to my clients why we got it wrong on their contract. 
So now you're in the know and uh, go and be good practitioners. All right. Have a good one.